Hi, my name is Ray Q. I'm a composer and turntablist, and today we will take a look at this beautiful new contact instrument that is called Crosstalk Piano, made by 10 Phantom Rooms for native instruments. This instrument will allow you to layer various piano sounds with a large collection of processed, resynthesized and deconstructed piano multi-samples in a very unique way because of its so-called crosstalk feature. This feature makes use of advanced volume modulation, which will allow you to create sounds you probably never heard before. Before we jump into the technical details of this instrument, let's have a look at the snapshot section and then play a few sounds to give you a feel for it. You will find more than 200 snapshots of very inspiring, carefully designed sounds ranging from subtle, fragile piano sounds with a twist to some heavily treated piano presets. But one of the highlights of Crosstalk Piano are the beautiful pads. On the left side you will find the sound variation slider which will help you to get even more diversity out of every preset but I'll explain it in detail later. One thing to understand is that the goal of Crosstalk Piano is not to give you your next flagship go-to piano library. Instead, it tries to inspire you to explore new sonic territories where your journey starts with the piano but takes you to some new and interesting places. Let's talk about the sound sources. Our starting point is a beautifully sampled piano from 1974. We have four real untreated piano articulations that you can combine with a huge collection of multi-samples that were created using stomp boxes, rare amps, modular gear to give you a colorful palette of sounds to choose from. One very beautiful detail I like to point out is the pictures on the user interface, which are all based on very creative photo shoots of the real piano being recorded for this instrument. Um, in many categories, the background will change. Let's take a look at this one, for example. That is actually a parking garage in Berlin combined with the inside of the upright piano. It almost looks like a weird cinema hall in a parallel universe. Very haunting and beautiful, and that gets some extra points from me. So, let's explore the so-called main page of Crosstalk Piano. Here, you will find the four layers that your sound will be based on. You can think of it as four channels where your samples are playing. By clicking on the names, you can choose your sound source from different categories. And as you can see, there's a lot to explore. And you can do that for all the four channels. We will stay on the felt piano sample for a minute. Next to it, you can turn the channel on and off, and under it, you will find this orange slider where you can adjust the volume. The dice you can see here is a form of randomizer. By clicking on it, it will choose a different sample for you, but you will stay in the same category you picked earlier. This is a cool feature if you're trying to explore this instrument playfully, 
but also if you're looking for those happy accidents we all love so much in music creation. To give you just a first glimpse of what makes this instrument special and help you to understand how it works, let's turn up the crosstalk macro, which I will cover in detail later on. As you can see, we already have some movement going on under the four multi-sample channels. The white lines indicate that they are modulated by the crosstalk feature. Let's turn up channel 4 and see what happens. As you can hear, we are not only playing a truly beautiful piano, we also have this organic rhythmic sequence playing, which gives us movement and takes our track in a certain direction. Let's turn up one more channel, the KISS freezing sample. Now we have this new and different rhythmic sequence playing with the other layers. Uh, I have to say the sound is already very inspiring to me and we only scratched the surface of this instrument. Let's continue to explore the main page. Let's have a look at the macros in the lower part. They are here to give you quick access to the most important sound shaping tools. The filter cutoff, which we'll find under the edit page, the amount of space or reverb that is under the mixer page. The crosstalk macro sets the amount of the earlier mentioned special crosstalk feature. We also have echo, which controls the dry wet mix of your delay effect. You can find all the effects on the mixer page up here. Then we have drift, which will introduce warble to your sound, emulating the characteristics of old wrinkly tape or the drift we get from vintage synthesizers. And lastly, we have the time macro where you can control the length of your sound. It can be very short or have a very long release time. As I said, the macros are here to give you quick access to the most important sound shaping tools, making it easy to drastically change the sound. They were carefully designed with special attention to details. You will find the macros automatically mapped out at your complete control keyboard, right at your fingertips to grab and get creative with. Since we are talking about creativity, one of my favorite features of this instrument is the sound variation slider. It will make your playing more expressive, but it will also give you some sub preset or variations of the snapshots you already have dialed in. The one we have loaded right now is called Intimate Kiss under the category Naked Plus. If we play with the sound variation position on A, it will be just the solo piano sound. But as soon as we change the sound variation slider to a different position, we can hear that the sound changes a lot because it starts to change various parameters throughout the instrument. From the macros down here to the volume sliders on the four channels, for example. It gives us the opportunity to morph between different settings and lets us create truly complex and beautiful soundscapes. All of this is controllable with the mod wheel, which will bring your sound to life in a very unique and expressive way. For this piece I played before, I used one of my own snapshots. And I think this instrument really invites you to come up with your own sound variations. It has a straightforward approach, but the results can be very complex, but still musical. Let's take another look at the sound variation slider and its possibilities to customize the tone further. On the positions A, B or C of the sound variation slider, you can store settings of your macro knobs, channel volume faders and even panorama and closed room mix settings on the mixer page. Now, a very simple example would be to take the filter macro and say that we want the filter to be closed at position A and open at the position C. Simply put your sound variation slider to position A, turn your filter macro all the way to the left and go to this dot right next to the A sound variation position. When you hover over it, a floppy disk will appear. By clicking on it, you will save this position of the macro. 
Then move your sound variation slider up to C, set the desired filter macro position there and save that as well. So now when I move the slider or the mod wheel on my keyboard, the filter macro will follow this movement and create interesting variations of the sound. Like I said, this goes for all the settings of all faders on the main page, plus panorama and close room mix on the mixer page. But just a little hint, the close room mix settings are only available for a few of the real piano articulations. Sometimes, when you want to keep things a little more straightforward, you can choose and select only some macros to be affected by the mod wheel. Click the three dots above the sound variation tool and select the desired parameter you want to use. Keep in mind that this will disable the ABC more function via mod wheel, but you will get some easy and fast controls for your chosen macros. All in all, the sound variation option will give you a lot of sound morphing possibilities. Very usable in film scoring, but also across a lot of different genres. Let's jump to what is probably the most magical page of this thing. The heart and soul of this crosstalk modulation feature is the step sequencer. With the sequencer, you can create unique patterns that will modulate the volume for your channels 2, 3 and 4. Simply click on this area and draw in a pattern you would like to use for your modulation. I will give you a simple another example so that you can get your head around this concept. Let's use channel 4 and turn everything else down. Now, let's draw in a pattern. This will be a sound on-off modulation. Let's play a note. As you can see, here in this white area, we can hear the sample and when we get to the gray area, the volume will be turned down all the way. The orange line indicates our play position in the sequence. Let's jump to the first page for a second. Here, on the channel 4, you will see this white line that appears when we actually hear the sound. This is a visual hint that we have some crosstalk modulation going on on this channel. Now, this abrupt volume modulation could be used for some rhythmical phrases, something like a hi-hat or a shaker. Let's go back to the crosstalk page and draw in something like that and listen to it. There we go. A very simple way to use volume modulation in a very musical way. Of course, this goes much further than that. You could create smoother or much more complex modulation sequences. Let's go back and have a look. You can increase the steps up to 128 which lets you create a long volume sequence with a lot of variation. The play direction plays your sequence forward, backward or forward and back, adding even more variation. The speed multiplier influences the playback speed. These are all incredible tools that will help you create interesting movement to your sound. Now, let's keep in mind that you can do that for channels 2, 3 and 4 independently. This means that we can create different volume sequences that beat together or against each other, creating new sonic possibilities. Channel 1 has a dock option, which means that the volume will dock on that channel as a counter movement to the modulation sequence on the other channel, so to speak. This preset area here will let you choose some pre-drawn sequencer movements in case you're looking for some inspiration. The intensity slider up here controls how much crosstalk modulation is applied to the channel, from a smooth to a fast gate-like cut. It's also important to pay attention to the crosstalk macro, which controls the intensity as well, but for all the channels with a modulation going on. On the right of this page, we'll find the controls for the drift LFO. You can control the intensity and the speed of the drift, giving us those tape, warble and vintage vibes we talked about earlier. You can choose if you want to apply this effect for all the four channels independently. Like always, keep in mind that the macros also control the intensity of the effects, so always keep an eye on that. The mixer page has two views, the channels and the effects view. Here you can tweak the usual stuff, you can choose between different reverbs and shape it to your taste. There is a beautiful convolution reverb that is based on existing real rooms, but also on a lot of unreal, super sophisticated spaces that will move your pianos to another dimension. You can choose between the usual suspects when it comes to the echo delay effect. Modern, analog and tape, you can also tweak them to your liking. There is a dirt effect, which adds different flavors to your signal. We have a screamer for some distortion, the lo-fi effect that features bit reduction and sample rate changes, and the lovely tape saturation effect to give you warmth and that nice tape saturation we all enjoy. The dirt effect is per channel, so you can assign different settings to every channel independently. The one thing left are these white rings you can see here. You will see them here and in the form of lines on the edit page. Those indicate the modulation depth of the parameter that is controlled by the macros. For example, if you click and drag on these up and down arrows here next to the echo knob, 
You can set how much echo will be heard once you start to use your echo macro down here. If no mod depth is assigned, we won't hear anything different. Once we set a mod depth, we can hear the echo effect when we turn up the macro. Here, on the edit page, you will find some additional basic sound shaping possibilities. You have your filter section, and if you look closely, once again you can see these up and down arrows that will allow you to set modulation depth. The white lines under it indicate how much modulation will be applied. On the right side, you have your standard ADSR envelopes. We can again see the up and down arrows, which mean that you can modulate it with the macros. On the left, you can choose your sound source and change the volume. The transpose slider is here. We have a slider that translates velocity to the filter behavior and under it one that controls velocity to volume. I personally like to crank up the velocity to volume because it gives me a more realistic piano feel. It makes this instrument a little bit more expressive when it comes to the piano side of things. All of this is adjustable for each channel separately as you can see here. So, we covered most of the important features. I really hope that I helped you understand this instrument and the innovative idea behind it a little bit more. I think to experience its full potential, you have to play it by yourself. Because the sonic range is so wide that everyone will find unique ways to use it in their own compositions, tracks or film scores. Um, you will find Crosstalk Piano on the Native Instruments website, but also make sure to check out 10 Phantom Rooms. Truly an amazing creative team behind this thing. Um, yeah, I wish you a lot of fun on your musical journey. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.